Hello and welcome to PDHC TV. Today we're going to talk about adding log for net logging to your Visual Studio project. The first thing we need to do is we need to down, download log for net from Apache. Uh, this is available at logging.apache.org slash log for net. This is the log for net homepage and over here on the left there's a download link. So go ahead and click that. And on the download page, you'll see some binaries. If you scroll down, down here are the binaries. There's two binaries. Uh, one says new key, the other says old key, and it's recommended that you take the new key.zip. Uh, I'm not going to download it because I've already downloaded it before. So let's just go to my downloads file, uh, directory. And here it is. Let's open it up. And the file you want is in log for net bin net. 4.0 or whatever version you're using release and there's your DLL this XML file is optional you don't really need it but you can include it if you want so I'm gonna take that DLL and copy it to my project uh, my projects called site cache so I'll go into my project site cache site cache and there's a binary the bin directory and I'll paste it there now within the project uh, we've added it to a directory but we have but the project itself doesn't know that the DLL is there so we need to go to the solution pane open up uh, our solution and go to references go ahead and right click references and click add reference and we want to ignore all this stuff up here and just hit the browse button and mine's already at the right place but what you'd have to do is probably go find your DLL so go to your project site cache site cache go to the binary directory and then there it is log for net .dll, and hit add and then you can see right it's already uh, it's added it to the list and it's already got it checked so you're good to go hit OK and you see that uh, it's been added as a reference along with all the other references here it is at the top log for net First thing you need to do after you've added the reference is go to this assembly info.css.cs file. And you need to add a line here. Um, now this, I don't expect you to pause the video and copy the text from the screen manually. So I'll include this somewhere either in the description or somewhere else in a text file so that you can just copy and paste it. But we're going to add this. And all it's saying is that um, there's this assembly called log for net and it has some XML configuration. And the XML configuration is found in this file called web.config. So that's all that does. Now, and so now we're going to add the actual um, configuration information. So here's our web.config file. We'll open that up. And we're, act we're already there, actually. And we're going to add some important sections. So this first section is important that it goes right under the configuration element. It has to be the first thing after the configuration element. If you put it anywhere else under any other element, when you try to de uh, build and run, it'll complain that this config sections is not under configuration. Uh, so make sure it's there. And all it's saying is that there that that later on in this file, there's going to be a section called log for net, and it's going to be of this type. And so let's go ahead and add that, that log for net section. So I'll take this and copy and paste it in here. So this is our log for net section. Uh, there's a lot going on in here, so I'll just go over a few of the more important things. Uh, file is the file that we want to we want our log to be in. So I'm going to change this from test proj to temp. And I'm going to change the log file name to, uh, let's see, cache service dot log. Um, down here we have some more options. Maximum file size. So, uh, oh, the there are there are a couple different appenders for log for net. Uh, we're going to be using the rolling file appender. And so what that does is it's going to create a file and using this maximum file size it's going to create a file that it appends to 
over and over again with all of your log statements until it reaches the maximum file size, in this case 10 megabytes. When it hits 10 megabytes, it's going to stop writing to that file and it's going to start writing to a new file. And then when it's done, when it's filled up that file, it's going to start writing to a new file and on and on. Uh, it's not going to do that forever though. When it, this uh, element right here, the max size roll, uh, roll backups, uh, limits how many files there are. So when it when it's written 10 log files, it'll the 11th log file will cause the first log file to be deleted. So you never have more than 10 10 megabyte uh, log files in there. Uh, the next important thing is this uh, this pattern layout. This specifies this is a format string that specifies what your log lines look like. And this is obviously this is really complex. Uh, you can make it as complex or as simple as, as you want. Um, I just went with uh, something I found online, and it looks it looks like this. Um, it first, the first column lists what kind of uh, debug messages or what kind of log messages it is, whether it's debug info, warn, warning, or error or fatal. Uh, it has the time the log message was done down to the millisecond. It has how long, right here in this column, how long the application has been running in milliseconds. This is the uh, the name of the log. This is the name of the method that was that the logging method was called from. So it was called from get a method called get cache news. And after this dash is the actual message that you specified when you were when you uh, put the log line in your um, code. All right, so that's what that looks like. So let's go ahead and make sure everything's saved. Now now that we have um, our assembly referenced, we can go into our uh, code file and we can type using log for net and that's okay. Um, we need to create a, uh, a logging object um, which we'll do in uh, here in the members of this class. So we'll do private static read only I log it's type I log I'm gonna call it logger and there is the way you get a, an I log object is you call log manager dot get logger and there's two overloads for get logger um, one just takes a string uh, for a name so you can specify any name you want so you can say logger logger name or you can give it a type. So type of, and in this case, this uh, my type is cache service. So I'm going to type cache service, and that's going to be the name of my that's going to be the name of my logger. I'm going to go with the type of uh, overload for this one. So now I have um, a logger object. Let's go ahead and use it. So you can see I've already typed in a logging statement here. It says logger dot debug hello somebody called cash get cash news. Let's delete that because whether we want to go over something else. Um, there's different levels of logging in log for net. There's five levels. The lowest level of logging is called debug. These are just the lowest level informational log um, log statements. Um, only when you're well, basically debugging or you're trying to find something really that's really hard to catch and you need to see all the information possible. The next level up is called info. Um, and that's just a little bit higher than debug. Next level up is called a warning. So you can uh, do a warn message. Next level up is called error. And that's an error that you need to take care of and fix. Fatal is the highest level of warn of uh, debug logging. Uh, fatal means your program is about to crash and, and here's all the information I can give you so that you can figure out why it crashed and prevent that from happening in the future. Uh, in this case we're just writing a friendly message to say that we've entered the get cached news method. So uh, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm gonna use the debug function to, to, to write a debug message and the message let's go with Hello, welcome to the get cached news method. 
and hit Control S. All right, and that's all we should need for um, to write out this log message. Uh, let's go ahead and build it, and it builds no with no uh, errors, and start debugging. Here's the debug window. So here's my cache service called get cache news. I'm going to invoke it here to get some get some news from the New York Times. There we go. We got a whole bunch of news in JSON. Uh, but more importantly, let's see what the what's in the logs. Let's go to our temp directory. Hit refresh. Oh, there it is right there. It's sorry, it's cache service.log. If we open this in Notepad++, we can see that we wrote out a message. It's a debug message. This was a time. It was written out 116 milliseconds after the application was started. It was called from get cache news, and the message is, hello, welcome to the get cache news method. So there you go. That's how you use Log4Net in your Visual Studio projects. I hope you enjoyed the, the video, and have a nice day.